go to that, yes. Brother Lorenzo Cole, while he's coming, I'm going to give you a little introduction. Enjoy. I was speaking for the homecoming address and is no stranger to us, uh, this church. He was born here in this community to the late Deacon, Deacon Joe Cole Jr. and Deaconess Lottie Lee Cole. He attended Old Bethlehem School and graduated from the old Jones High School that no longer exists in New Texas. He accepted they accepted Christ here in this church at an early age and continue this Christian journey today as a member of the Pilgrim West Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, where he served as one of the servant deacons. I give you Lorenzo Cole. Service, 1886 to 1966. 
old Red Hound Legionary Baptist Church, still this day. And I was looking through it, I saw pictures, I saw, remind me of that old, what's y'all over there? You know what that is, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look here, and yeah, look here. I, 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 I said, I looked at the program, and there was every name that God on the glory, and I accept two. And I said, I'm going to embarrass him today. Since I'm that cousin and I'm the oldest, I'll be 89 in a few more months. So they can't, they can't whoop me. I still run. I'll be there here today. I know they don't know what they did that day. They were so young, probably 15, 16, something like that. Since they are my cousin, they are Sister Edna Cole Moore, she's back there, and Sister Glory Cole Wilson, and she is over there. Now, if my man is correct, now let me say this, I'm not going to keep you long. I'm going to use y'all. I'm not going to keep you long. I'm going to use that. I'm going to say that a long time. Some of you, he's going to hear me, he's going to hear the guest speaker today. And also, it's hot out there. And I got to get back down. If my math is correct, 157 years ago, this church had its beginning with a few men of vision, as well as other baptized believers in Christ. The first structure was in Bresh Hall. Mm -hmm. You see that? The law to seek. Now look at us now. Look what the law has done for us. Yeah. He has blessed us beyond blessed. Yeah. We are here to celebrate 157 years. As I was contemplating what to say about this anniversary that we shared together, I thought about that card that I got in the mailbox the other day from my doctor, asking me about my annual checkup. I know y'all get them. If you don't, you can't, but get a checkup. And then I thought, what a good time and anniversary it is for checking our spiritual health. Yeah. People talk about their health all the time. Their mental health, their physical health. But how is our spiritual health? How is yours on this anniversary? It's okay if it's not perfect. I fully expect to go to my checkup and listen to my doctor advise me, lose more pounds, watch my cholesterol, more closely, use less salt, exercise more, like I was supposed to the last time I visited him. <laughs> but I don't expect a perfect report. When it comes to our spiritual well-being, we can take stock today. We may have had some challenging days when we battled jealousy, disappointment, grief, job loss, sickness, and even death. We may have had some days when we felt like Dad and Thomas, yes. or Jonah in the whale bed. Yeah. We may have wondered why God has forsaken us. We might wonder if we really matter. But God knew we matter in God's eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, we don't go to the doctor really to hear good news. We go there knowing that we are flawed. We go for help so we can improve our health. Yeah. Yeah. It's why we come here today at Old Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church on the 150th anniversary. We don't come as perfect Christians, or we have our moments, but we come to become better Christians, more spiritually healthy. So I remind you, good Christian, because you are at heart, even when you fall short, that this anniversary is the time to take stock in your spiritual health, to reflect upon it, and to open yourself to the good, good medicine that is found in worship, Bible study, Sunday school, and fellowship. We can all improve on our spiritual well-being by striving to become the Christian we know the Lord wants us to be. Each day of the year is an opportunity to be better when we all achieve this worthy goal. As I close, let me take a moment here to acknowledge and thank the men and women whom we love but see no longer. Those who now live with the Lord and who watch over us and pray for us from heaven's balcony. Thank God we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses without whom a celebration like today would not be possible. Thank God for the original three founding members and this church and their first pastor, Brother Ellen Graves, Brother Frederick Morris Sr., Brother Henry Morris Sr., 
and that pastor, Reverend E. G. Mitchell. Because they were, we are. And because they did, we can. Thank you, Old Ham. May the God bless you. Continue to bless you with money. Is my prayer. Let the church say amen. amen. We have so much going on. 
So several years ago, we had one of our old saints that had been here for quite some time, and she was a stickler for education. And every year, we did our best to or our students that was going off to college. And each year since then, uh, we have developed or established a uh, Rosie Nelson Scholarship recipient. Yeah. Each year, qualifications is for them to write an essay. Uh, and this year, our recipient is a part of our family. Uh, the loved ones, we have roots here at Old Bethlehem in Tunis, Texas. So this year our recipient is one that is headed off to Prairie View A&M University. And it's none other than Avari Swain. Amen. Deacon, sister, and Deacon Swain, that's their son's uh, yeah, Taurus Swain in Houston, Texas. Amen. <laughs> and a few years ago, we thought about those young families that's just uh, finishing up college or finishing up high school and uh, they're starting a career. And we figured that we could uh, bless them just a little bit. So we started a love offering for all of those who are striving right now, either in college or they just started their career. And our recipients for this month, I think we do that every month. We do it every month now. And our recipient, recipients for this month is Javen Stringfellow. And she's a, she's a sophomore from her junior year at Sam Houston State University. Also a student at Prairie View A and M. If I'm not mistaken, she's getting her bachelor's degree in what? Is Tanisha Allen? Oh. 
Offering. Offering. Sister Barbara Hessler. 
We have Jerusalem Baptist Church, Caldwell, Texas, $100. And we have St. James Christian Church, Mansfield Lewis, $350. Uh, John the Baptist, Pastor Hayes, Magic, $243. We have Second Street Baptist Church. Uh, Pastor Glover, two fifty. We have Somerville Church of God. Pastor Smith, five hundred. Old Bethlehem Church, two hundred fifty. No, this ain't Old Bethlehem. Pastor Liston. Pastor Liston. Uh, where's it? You got a counter? Is that 550? Yeah. Pastor, I mean, uh, Mount Zion uh, Baptist Church pastor lays a list of $550. Yeah. 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 It's all together. Okay. Macedonian Baptist Church, Caldwell, Texas, that's $150. And then let us pray. Let's, let's go. Well, God, we thank you for the offering which is rendered today. We pray that this offering be used, that it may grow your kingdom on earth. We thank you for all the one that gave. We thank you for the one that had desire or had not. We ask that you bless each and every one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Get up, sit down, and I still love. to Tunis, Texas. And we was on our way, we was leaving Houston. I was a limousine driver. And Mr. Donald Blake ordered the limousine. The company was right around from his restaurant, Blake's Barbecue, that he called and wanted to go to Brownwood, Texas. And it was a Mother's Day weekend. And so when I picked up Mr. Blake, he had two young ladies with him and it was uh, Miss Wilson and Doris, another cousin, she's went to be with the Lord. So we started our journey in Houston, we came through Brenham, we stopped at the cemetery and came to Tunis, and from Tunis we went on to Brownwood. But when I got to Brownwood, his brother was there, and he was working for Brownwood High School, and he was a preacher, he had his church as a pastor. And so we went on and introduced him to his brother and his brother had kids of course but this is when I met this young man which is Mr. Blake's nephew his brother's son um, but this is all the connection to me being here for the past 20 something years 
when I get to say that. Thank you, and, and, and Gloria, Mr. Blake. But when I got to Brownwood, of course, I met his, uh, Mr. Blake's brother, and he introduced him to all of his kids, and they was young kids back then because it's been over 25 years ago, and I don't know, he's probably about 26. Now. Yeah, he's probably only about 20. Maybe he was five years old, something like that. But he was a young person, and you know, he gave the impression then as a young man that he was going to serve the Lord, and the Lord has used him through the years. But now he is the pastor uh, right outside of Dallas, and y'all read the program. But I was blessed to, uh, to talk with him, and he accepted the invitation. And so I was very excited about it. And he's grown through the years. Now he has his own family and kids, and uh, he know what his daddy was going through with him and his brothers and sisters. So he's uh, raising uh, how many kids you have, now? Yeah, four kids. I thought he was just two. Four. Okay. I see why he lost all his hair. But uh, anyway, if we stand, please, and receive. My friend, my little brother, Pastor Alex Blake. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, Come help me out. Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anybody happen to be in the house of the Lord? One more time. Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Y'all may be seated, amen, and I'll ask you to stand in a moment. But I love coming here to Bethlehem, oh Bethlehem. But oh Bethlehem means house of bread. Amen. It means house of bread. Bread represents the word of God. And the Bible declares that man should not live by bread alone, but by what every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so I thank God for the word that comes from this house. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, and to be honest with you, the older I get, I'm happy to be anywhere. Uh, a couple of years ago, a doctor called me on Friday, amen, about three o'clock and said, Mr. Blake, I'm sorry, we think you may have cancer. And as I got the news, amen, fear tried to fill my heart, but after fear tried to fill my heart, faith stood up on the inside of me. And I thank God for a clean bill of health. And so I don't take it lightly being in the house of the Lord. I don't take it lightly, amen. I don't sit down on my praise anymore. I, I don't sit down, amen, on lifting my hands anymore. I, I don't worry what people think about. The older I get, the less I care about what people think about my praise. Is there anybody here unashamed to give God some praise? Anybody unashamed to say, Lord, I thank you for another day's journey. I decided that every chance I get, I'm going to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with prayer. I don't know, it might be my last time. Uh, and so I'm going to use everything I've got to give them all that I've got. And I want to give honor, amen. We're not there yet, amen, but I appreciate it. I, I want to give honor to where honor is due, giving honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to the pastors, leaders, and elders, and all of the saints here that I've gathered here today. If you don't mind, pull, amen, a smile out of your pocket, your 32s, your 22s, your 10s, whatever you got left, amen, and share your smile with somebody else and let your neighbor know I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord. I'd be remiss if I did not honor my father in his absence, amen, Bishop A.C. Blake, who is not just my father, but he's my overseer as well. I honor him today. He couldn't be here. Uh, and I heard it said that there's only one person in the world you know for sure that wants, amen, you to be better than them, and that's your father. Amen. Couldn't be more true with him. I do want to acknowledge, amen, my uncle. Amen. Don Blake, amen, who's one of my heroes. He's in the room uh, here today as well. And of course, my beautiful mother is here, amen, as well. I thank God for 
for her. I want to honor as well, amen, Pastor Laverne. Go ahead and praise for him. You, you see, we, we have the privilege of coming home, but somebody's got to keep the house open. Come on, somebody. Somebody's got to keep the lights on while we're away. And so I thank God for him and for this beautiful congregation that has allowed us all to be able to come to this this home going and this homecoming celebration. You see, when he called me to speak, I, I, I had to make sure he, he got the right Blake, amen. There's so many Blakes, amen. There's a Blake over here and a Blake over there. There's a Blake everywhere. I, I said, do you have the right Blake? He said, yeah, Alex Blake. I said, well, you got the right Blake, amen. And so I, I won't be before you, you long, and that's true, amen. That's a pastor's way of saying, amen, go ahead and buckle in. Amen. But when I started preaching, amen, over 20 years ago, amen, I was five, amen, over 20 years ago, my my great aunt, amen, Millie Smith, she, when I went and told her, amen, I was going to be preaching, she said, son, I'm so happy for you, but don't be up there all day long. She said, don't nobody want to hear all that if she had a few extra words that we can't say in church. She said, say what you got to say and sit your blessed assurance down. And so if you have your Bibles with you this morning or this afternoon, uh, the theme passage of Scripture, amen, on today is found in the book of Joshua, the book of Joshua, Joshua 4 and 1. If you don't have your Bibles, grab your iPhones, your iPads, your Nook, your Nitty, whatever you use to connect with the Word of God, amen. Joshua 4 and 1, if you will just read with me for just a moment, the Bible, amen, gives us instruction here. And I want to live for a few moments, amen, just some things that the Lord wants to encourage us with here uh, with this 157 years. So when the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, choose uh, 12 men from among the people, one of each tribe, and tell them, uh, tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan. It was in the middle of the Jordan. From right where the priests were standing and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. Uh, so Joshua called together 12 men uh, had, he had appointed from, the, from Israelites, one of each tribe. He said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. Each of you, uh, uh, you take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites to serve as a sign among you in the future when your children ask, when your kinfolks ask, when your neighbors ask, when your friends ask, and then when your enemies, your frenemies ask, what do these stones mean? Uh, tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off. Tell them that God showed up right on time. That the flow of the Jordan was cut off and the ark of the covenant of the Lord, when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones will be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Father, as we go into your word, allow your word to go into us. Lord, grant me clarity of thought, precision of sound. Father, give your people an ear to hear, a heart to receive, but Lord, a mind to obey your word. Holy Spirit, I need you now. Come and feel this place. Speak to me and speak through me. God, holy preaching power in Jesus' mighty name. The church said amen. 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 You may be seated. The grass withers and the flowers fade. But the word of our God will stand forever. Uh, I want to preach this for a few minutes, amen, uh, from the topic, uh, don't, don't ever forget. Don't ever forget. If I had a subtopic, I would just tell you, stand still in. Stand still in. I, 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 there was a story, amen, that, that, I, that encouraged me as I was really praying and preparing for this, this passage, amen, of scripture to preach. The story about a father and a son and a daughter who were eight and ten. They, they were out on the Atlantic Ocean. And as they were there on the ocean, amen, a few miles from New Jersey, amen, they, they, they were great swimmers. But they, on this particular day, they were a long way from shore. Uh, and they became separated when the dad realized that the tide was carrying them out to sea. 
He called out to his daughter and he said, Mary, I'm going to shore for help. He said, if, if, if you get tired, Mary, as you're out here on the ocean, I just want you to get on your back, Mary, and you can swim on your back and float all day. But Mary, I want you to know, don't worry, I'm coming back for you. Uh, he and the boy made it to shore, and, and they were frantic, amen, searching for the girl. But finally, after four hours, they, they found Mary, amen, and Mary was, was back when she was floating on her back, and she had a smile on her face. And they asked Mary, Mary, why were you so calm, amen, after four hours of being out here on the ocean? Well, she said, I'm, I'm, I'm calm because I, I heard my daddy say, don't worry, I'm going to be back. And I just want to submit to you today, amen, as what the Word of God tells us today in the passage of Scripture, that we can stand still and know that God will make a way even in the midst, amen, of, of, of a dry land. God will still make a way even in the midst, amen, of us crossing over our own Jordan. There are two times where God parted literal waters to make a way for his people. The first was the Red Sea. Anybody remember the Red Sea? Amen. Moses puts down his rod and God uses Moses, amen, to part, amen, the Red Sea. I'm so glad that God could use, amen, Moses who couldn't hardly talk. I'm, I'm so glad that God can use a Moses, amen, who killed and murdered somebody. I'm glad that God can use, amen, a no good sinner like Moses to be able to liberate and set his people free. Why? Because it gives me, amen, assurance knowing that if God can use Moses, then God can use you. And God can use me. I'm so glad to know that God can use a nobody to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. We'll have a witness in here, amen, just for a few moments. The people, amen, were, of Israel were just still journeying along the path that God was directing them toward, carrying the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant represented the manifest presence of God. They were carrying the glory of God. I want to ask you, oh Bethlehem, are you carrying the glory of God with you? Because if you're carrying the glory of God with you, wherever you go, there's victory. Wherever you go, there's going to be deliverance. Wherever you go, there's going to be provision. Wherever you carry the glory of God to God, we'll provide for you. I'm preaching with y'all. Amen and already. Uh, they arrived at the edge of the Jordan and there, there, was, there was no way for them to cross. Uh, there, 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 there was a time of the year where the river, amen, was high and, the, and it, it was running swiftly and, and the, the banks were overrun. It was a, a rushing, flooding river. And God instructed Joshua that when the people come to the brink of the flowering waters of the Jordan, the priests were to carry the Ark of the Covenant and stand in the Jordan. He said, when, when you come, I want the priest to go out before you. And I want the priest to stand in the Jordan. I want to tell you, men of God, God has called us to stand in the middle of a culture that's running roughshod in the opposite direction of what the Word of God says. We can't back down. We can't bow down. But we have to stand firm in the middle of the Jordan. It won't always be comfortable. It won't always be easy. It won't always be firm. We have to stand in the middle of the Jordan. And the Bible said that Joshua passed the message along and they did as they were told. Joshua, amen, was there. And as a result, the waters parted and the people passed across on dry land. Uh, that sounds familiar to what happened, amen, uh, there with the, the, the Red Sea. But wait, but wait until God tells you uh, to do otherwise. And he says, and he, and he will make the way clear. There is, there is a, a glaring similarity in these two events. God's direction was to stand still and he would provide. For 157 years, God said, stand still and he will provide. For 157 years, God said, be faithful to me and I'll be faithful to you. For 157 years, he said, if you'll come, I will show up and I will make myself known. I don't know where you are in this season of your life, but God wants you to stand still in the middle of what you're going through. The theme this year is monumental, monumental. Take a neighbor and say monumental. 
Monumental is, is has a great importance. It's extent or size. It's something that is that is large. It's something that's bigger than life. And when you think about monuments, you think about something that is built to last. So when you think about monuments, you think about something that is built that tells a story that inspires others by its story. When you think monumental, it's something that is built to declare that something great has happened, and we want everybody to know about it. I would believe that what God has done here for 157 years is monumental. And we ought to tell everybody about what God has done right here at Old Bethlehem. I heard my cousin say, amen, we got saved here. We got baptized here. Amen, we buried our loved ones here. God has done something great here. It's monumental what God has done here, right here at Old Bethlehem. But may I submit to you for a moment what God wants to do in your life. It is monumental that God wants you to have big dreams. God wants you to have a purpose that he can work through and walk out in your life. God wants you to be monumental people for the Lord. Uh, I thank God this was built, amen, by brick, the sister said. But the Bible calls us to be, amen, living epistles, living bricks, living stones to be read by men. When people meet you, what do you, what do they say about you? When people encounter you, do they hear Christ in you? When people encounter, do they hear you in the grocery store talking about Jesus or talking about your neighbor across the street? What do people encounter when they encounter you? I believe that, that it's important for us, amen, to make sure that our stones, our stones mean something. I, I realize that in this day and time, when we want to capture something, what we do, we put out our phone and we, we take a selfie and we want to memorialize a moment. But I believe that your life and my life, amen, are called to be memorialized by God, that we will be living epistles, standing firm for what God says is right. Uh, here's some famous monuments. The Statue of Liberty is a famous monument. The Washington Memorial is a famous monument. The Martin Luther King Memorial is a famous monument. Uh, and allow me to insert a man that these memorials of stone are wonderful, but God is calling you, God is calling you again to be a living stone. Uh, it's important, amen, that we live lives, amen, that represent the best of what God has done in our lives. Uh, I believe if you make small plans, you miss God. If you have small dreams, you have missed God. If you, if you can accomplish what is in your heart on your own, you have missed God. God. I don't believe, amen, the people, amen, that started El Bethlehem had anything small in their mind. They knew that we serve a mighty God. They knew that we serve a God that could open up doors that nobody else could open. Uh, these stones represent, amen, these stones represent a promise-keeping God. The, the stones represent that he's an all-powerful God. Uh, and the third thing, the stones represent that he is a present help in times of trouble. Uh, don't you ever forget, don't you ever forget. I remember growing up, amen, that, that, that when, I, when I left the house, before I left the house, my mother would look me over and she would say, amen, boy, when you leave this house, don't forget, you represent me. She said, boy, when you leave this house, don't forget, amen, what you say is an extension of what I say. What you do is an extension of me. And she was trying to tell me that don't you go outside and embarrass me. You better act like you got some good sense. See, we call that home training when I grew up, amen. Kids don't have no home training these days. They go anywhere, they say anything. But I, I was taught, amen, to make sure I represented where I came from. Uh, I believe that God is calling every believer to represent where you come from and who you are and whose you are. The first thing I want you to get is don't forget, don't forget to practice, don't forget to practice, amen, the memorial, amen, he said these stones will be a memorial forever, every time they pass through here, your children and your children's children, I, I can't wait, amen, next year to bring my kids, amen, to old Bethlehem, so I want them to, to know what the Lord has done, he said your children and your children's children, amen, I, I, I grew up in a time, amen, where I couldn't tell my mama I wasn't going to church, I I couldn't tell my daddy I wasn't going to church, baby. They said, as for me and my house, we are going to what? Serve the Lord. If I get up and go to church, you're going to get up and go to church. If I get up and go to Bible study, you're going to get up and go to Bible study. What is this? Amen. I don't feel like going. You're going to feel like, well, as long as you are under my roof, you're going to do what I tell you to do. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. We've got to learn how to practice. Why do we press so that we don't forget? 
I would encourage you, church, don't forget where the Lord has brought you from. I know many of you praise the Lord, amen. You live in the city now like I do, amen. And you're driving better than you ever dreamed before. You're living better than you ever lived before. And you may have forgotten where the Lord has brought you from. But don't forget, baby, it was you, amen, that was outdoors with no shoes. It was you, amen, that was crying in the midnight hour. And it was God who heard the cry and answered you by. And don't forget where the Lord has brought you from. Too often times we forget, we forget, we forget, we forget we were the ones in the club and God delivered us. We forget we were the ones, amen, that was sinking deep in sin, far from a peaceful shore, very deep in sin, seeking to arrive, but the master of the sea, heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Uh, now don't forget, don't forget what God has brought you from. Uh, I know where I came from. 1217 Melwood, Brownwood, Texas. Uh, I know where I came from. Uh, living in my, my, my mom Bernie's house, amen. A little shotgun house, but it was a beautiful house to me. I know where I came from. Uh, and I can look back and I can say, Lord, I thank you for keeping uh, Mom Birdie. I thank you for keeping Daddy. I thank you for keeping Mama. But Lord, I want to say, I thank you for keeping little old me. It was me, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father. But Lord, it was me. See, I can't forget. So sometimes, amen, we want to have big mama's religion. We want to have, have papa's religion. But you got to know God for yourself. You got to know him for yourself intimately, personally. You got to know God for yourself. Don't forget, don't forget to practice. Don't forget to practice. Say, practice makes uh, perfect. Say, practice makes perfect. We got to learn how to practice this thing every chance with that we get. The second thing I want us to get, amen, as we're remembering, amen, how to live monumental lives. Don't don't forget to proclaim. Don't forget to proclaim. Uh, the, the three things, amen, in the proclaiming peace, amen. The first thing, we got to proclaim what God did, amen, in the past. Number two, we got to we gotta, we gotta proclaim what, what, we, what God is doing right now in the present. And we got to proclaim what God will do in the future. I, I just want to encourage you, encourage you, it's important for us to learn how to proclaim. Uh, this is what I know. This is what I know. Amen. Ladies, you know how it goes. If there's a, if there's a nice sale at Macy's, what do you do? You call everybody you know. And you tell everybody, child, don't you know there's a sale going on at Macy's? You better get down there really quick, fellas. Y'all the same way. If there's a suit on sale, somebody, if it's somewhere, you're going to call your cousin. You're going to call your, your nephew. Say, nephew, there's a sale. You tell everybody. Every time there's good news, you want to tell somebody about the good news. Uh, we'll get the best news ever told, amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We've got good news. We ought to proclaim what the Lord has done in our lives. You see, when that doctor told me I had cancer, uh, it paralyzed me for a moment. Anybody ever had, amen, a, a bad diagnosis before? Uh, anytime you have bad news, you've got to remember that you serve a good God. I said, anytime you hear bad news, you've got to remember that you serve a good God. Uh, because fear would try to fill your heart. And when fear fills your heart, it tries to rob you of your faith. Has anybody ever had a moment where fear is trying to rob you of your faith, rob you of your joy? And the reason why the enemy uses fear to rob you of your joy, said, I can rob them of their joy, I can rob them of their praise. If I can keep them from praising me, I can keep them locked up in their situation. But if they ever lift up their voice, if they ever learn how to praise me in the midst of what they're going through, when praise goes up, the blessing and the blesser comes down. I believe that God wants us to learn how to proclaim. We've got to learn how to proclaim. There's a story about a Young boy who was born blind. This boy who was born blind got bad news the same way I got that bad news. And sometimes we get bad news, you want to throw in the towel. And the enemy wants something more for you to throw in the towel. I went home after I got that news and I decided I wasn't going to tell my wife and my daughters I don't want them to be afraid. And so for several months, amen, I sit on that news. And for several months, amen, I had a hard time lifting my hands and praising the Lord. I would come uh, on Sunday morning and I would preach, amen, but, but on the inside, amen, I was torn up on the inside. 
Have you ever been there before when you knew, amen, what God's word said, but you're still wrestling what's going on, amen, in your life? Come, come here just for a few moments. Have you ever been there before? Amen. Tell the truth, shame the devil. Uh, and so I, I was driving home, amen, a few months afterwards, and, 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 and the song came on the radio, Jira, you more than enough. And he says, I will be content in every circle. I heard that song, Pastor, as long as if I heard it for the first time. That driver that God will provide. And, and he lifted my spirit. I said, Lord, if you, if you deliver me and heal me, I'll bless your name, God. Even if you don't deliver me, I'll still bless your name. We've got to have our minds made up that even if God doesn't deliver us, he is more than able. And I will proclaim that God is great and is greatly to me. Be this boy was born, he was born blind. And every single day, they had a routine. His mother would take him up to his bedroom and he would go to the window of his house and look out the window and he would ask his mother the same thing every night. Mama, describe to me what you see. Mama, I can't see you, but I want to see through your eyes. Can you tell me what you see? And the mother, the best that she could, she would proclaim and tell her son what she saw. She said, I see how green the grass is. I see, amen, the birds flying and, and the robins, amen, they're singing and they're red and they're beautiful. And she would go, amen, into great detail describing what she saw. Uh, they got word, amen, of an exploratory, amen, type of, of medicine that may allow this boy in procedure, allow him to be able to see for the very first time. The mother said, I don't have nothing to lose. Let's go to the doctor and find out what this is all about. They, they decided to go and try out this trial procedure to see if, the, if it would work for this young boy. Uh, so they go in for the surgery. The little boy comes out. The surgery is successful, but he has bandages all around his face and his eyes. They said, hey, come back, hey, amen, in about four weeks. In four weeks, we're going to take the bandages off your eyes and see, hey, amen, if this procedure actually worked. Yeah. Four weeks later, the boy, hey, amen, couldn't hardly sleep the night before. He goes, hey, amen, and as he's there, they unwrap the bandages from his eyes. Uh -huh. He said, I refuse to open my eyes right here. I want to go back home, and mama put me in front of the window. That's the place I want to open my eyes up for the very first time. Yeah. Uh, Mama takes him, amen, up to the room. At the same time, she would only go into bed, even right before dawn. And, and, and so they go to dust and they see he opens up his eyes for the very first time. Light hits the prism of his eyes. And he's able, amen, to wrestle with it for a few months. He opens up his eyes and he began to weep. He said, Mama, you, you never told me it was this beautiful. You never told me it was this radiant. You never told me it was this amazing. And all I want to say to you today is the Bible tells us that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the hearts of men, but God has in store for us. And so I can proclaim the best I can, but what God has for you is monumental. I'm doing the best I can to explain it to you, but what God has, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, neither has it entered into the hearts. Of man. The third thing I want to give you, amen, before I go to my seat, they, we, don't, we don't want to forget, amen, to, to practice. Don't forget to proclaim it. We, we sure better not ever forget how to praise. Right. Don't forget how to praise. Don't forget how to praise. It's important that we remember, amen, how to praise. Some of us praise, amen, with our hands lifted. Some of us praise, amen, with our voices. Some of us praise with a song and with a dance. We're going to learn how not ever to forget how to praise. If the Lord has been good to you, you ought to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually but be in your mouth. You'll learn how to praise God. I believe it's important for us to know that when we're standing still in the middle of the Jordan, it is the praise that releases the blessing of God on the believer. We ought to give God praise in every situation. We ought to bless the Lord, oh my soul, in all that's within me. We ought to bless his holy name. Why? Because he is worthy of our praise. Is God worthy of your praise? Is he worthy of your praise? Is he worthy? If God is worthy, you want to give God the clap of praise all over this house. I praise him. I 
praise him. Why? Because he's worthy. I praise him because this is what I know that he is not only worthy of the praise, but he's worthy because he's he's my king. But he's no ordinary king. See, my king, he needs no protection. He's all powerful. My king, he needs no introduction. They say he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. They said he's Adam's redeemer. He's Abel's vindicator. He's Abram's sacrifice. He's Noah's ark. He's Moses' bush on fire. That's my king. He's Moses' bush on fire, but he's Joshua's battle axe. And he's Gideon's fleece. He's Samson's power. He's David's praise. He's no ordinary king. He's a lion of the tribe of Judah. He's a lily of the valley. He's a bright and the morning star. That's my king. He has no end and he has no beginning. That's my king. He's, he's Solomon's wisdom. He's Jeremiah's God Gilead. He's Elijah's raven in the desert. He's Malachi's vision. That's my king. Do you know him? I, I, I tried him for myself. This is what I know. He sits closer than a brother. That's my king. And the reason why, church, we are in this season of 157 years. It's our king is a king. Amen. It sits high, sits high and sits low. Our king is a king that has no end and he has no beginning. Yeah. So we got to learn how to stand still in the middle of the Jordan. The 12 stones represent the number of government. They took 12 stones. And those 12 stones, 12 men carried them. And I believe that God in this season is causing, calling the men and women of God that will stand firm, amen, for the things of God and that will carry stones. Well, the stones that we're carrying is a living stone named Jesus. His name is Jesus. The chief cornerstone that the builders rejected. His name is Jesus. That's the stone that you and I are called to carry. Where do we carry it? We carry it into the workplace. We carry it, amen, into the school. We carry it into the grocery store. Amen. If we only carry it to the house of God, we're missing out on what it means to really carry the living stone named Jesus. And I believe that God wants to set this church up for another 157 years. But we've got to remember what these stones mean. See, we have, we live in a world today where up is down and down is up. Where right is wrong and wrong is right. We live in a world today where we, we can't have, amen, the Ten Commandments in schools, amen, but we can have pornography in the schools. Are y'all still with me, church? We live in a day right now to where if you sit up and say something, amen, uh, according to the word of God, you're going to be called a bigot, amen, and somebody who's racist. we got to stand firm on the word of God. I want to take the risk of not standing firm on the word of God. If you don't stand firm, your grandchildren and your grandchildren's children won't have old Bethlehem. All right. When the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Spirit of God lifts up a standard. How does God lift up a standard in this day and age? Through you and through me. You're the standard. This is what I know. The world wants us to lower the standard. But I tell everybody, it's not my standard to lower, it's God's standard. Yeah. Yeah. My neighbor is Anthony Evans, Pastor Tony Evans' son. Yeah. And Anthony they shared a story with me about how Anthony, when he was in the ninth grade, he was an athlete and he went up to dunk the basketball. He dunked the basketball for the very first time. He was excited about the fact that he was able to dunk the basketball, so he ran across the street to his dad and said, Dad, come in. you got to see me dunk the basketball. His dad was excited for him, went across the street, and should have ended and grabbed the basketball and took two or three dribbles, ran up, and he dunked the basketball, and he started celebrating. But the father recognized something. He says, Anthony, there's something wrong with this goal. you lowered the goal from 10 feet <laughs> to 9 feet. He said, Anthony, I love you, son, but come back and get me when you raise the goal to the right standard. Okay. Okay. 
Many of us have co-signed lowering the standard. God has set the standard. And because of you have kept that standard 157 years, it's monumental. I said it's monumental. I'm coming to a close. I'm done. When the doctor told me I had cancer, I told the Lord with every breath that I've got, I'll still preach and proclaim your word. I'm getting, I'm healed in Jesus' name. But there are times, even like today, when I've been weak in my body. But as long as I've got breath in my body, I'm going to proclaim Jesus until he comes. Because one of these days, and it won't be long, I'm going to my very last breath. My chin is going to hit my chest. And I'm going to stand in the presence of God. This is what I know God's going to say. Well done. Thy good and faithful servant. You have been faithful to stand in and not forgetting what I've done for you. So with every breath that you've got, make sure it's monumental for the glory of God. God bless you. Church, we can do better than that. Give the Lord a hand. Don't ever forget. Don't ever forget that God can use you no matter who you are or who you were. But He just wants you now. The doors of the church are now open. At this time, There's an opportunity for you to swallow your pride, to realize that you are just a little part of God's great seed. No one can call you a sinner. We've all been there. So he's waiting on you. We can suffer, we can party, we can run. But he still says, I stand at the door and knock. He said, if you open up the door, I'll come in and suck with you and you with me. So he puts it, the invitation in your hands. Because if you want to be redeemed, then you have to open up that door and let the Lord come in. And I know how you feel. I felt that way too. I didn't want to get up in front of the whole church and let them know that I'm a sinner. I want to be saved. We didn't have anyone in the house that didn't feel the same way. But God uses the least of those. The ones that society say that is nothing and they won't ever be nothing. But God changes them. He can take a nobody like me and set me up in a poor pit. But I'm not afraid and I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But old Satan have you thinking those ugly hearts. 
Deus tem do sul. Pintado no pé. God is the true justice in war. He loves his fire. Who is this there? Waiting for you. After a word, we just receive. We know God will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. The invitation has been extended. It was yours to accept or to reach out.